Welcome everyone and good afternoon. Welcome to the LA Business Council's virtual energy roundtable in partnership with the LA City Council President Nuri Martinez, Los Angeles Department of Water Power and the Green Together Collaborative and Wells Fargo. I'm Mary Leslie, I'm president of the Los Angeles Business Council. We are glad you have joined us today to learn more about LADWP's different solar programs that can turn your property into a revenue generating asset. For the past decade, the LABC has helped develop this program and we have a long history in the Northeast San Fernando Valley with our coalition partners to reduce adverse health impacts resulting from incompatible land use through cleanup greenups ordinance. We've also worked on increasing deployment of local solar by expanding the FIP program and the net meter program in, in, in all communities. And we've worked to replace fossil fuel infrastructure with clean energy technologies, which we're still doing. We are focusing today our outreach and engage, engagement efforts in the Northeast San Fernando Valley, alongside our partners, Pacoima Beautiful, the Trust for Public Land, Grid Alternatives, LA Conservation Corps, UCLA, Community Partners in the City of LA, thanks to the support of the California Strategic Growth Council and the Wells Fargo Foundation, who has been supporting our work in the Northeast Valley since 2018. Today, we are joined by Councilwoman Nuri Martinez, the president of the LA City Council, in addition to LADWP's Feed and Tariff Program Manager and LADWP's Electrical Engineer, the CEO of Perma City is also joining us in addition to uh, the vice chair of business development um, from Perma City as well. And Grid Alternatives um, is joining us as well and will be presenting. Before we begin, I want to note that you can begin typing any questions you have in the chat function below. Please put your questions there. To kick off the presentation, I'd like to introduce a good friend to the LABC and a champion for clean energy and job creation, President Nuri Martinez. She first became um, an advocate as a councilwoman and as the head of Pacoima Beautiful years ago. She has been addressing social inequities and health impacts in the Northeast Valley for many years. Her first move as chair of the E&E &E committee was to rename it to the Energy, Climate and Environmental Justice Committee. She introduced her own version of the Green, clean, bah, green New Deal agenda, prioritizing clean energy investments in low-income communities of color. Under her leadership, she has pushed the council and the city to adopt and implement nationally leading environmental standards. And for all of these reasons, the LABC is proud to present her with our Sustainability Trailblazer Award at the 2020 Sustainability Summit. Thanks to her leadership and partnership, the state of California has improved millions of dollars worth of clean energy projects in the Northeast Valley. So without further ado, please welcome Council President. Thank you, Mary. Can everyone hear me? Just, okay, great. Thank you very much for that introduction, Mary. It's nice to see you. And it's great to be here today. As many of you know, Los Angeles has committed to some of the most uh, progressive climate change policies in the entire nation. Earlier this year, we came out with the LA 100 study that provides a path for now, for how the city is gonna to transition to 100% renewable energy. The city council voted to approve this and reach its goal by 2035. For communities like the ones I represent in the Northeast San Fernando Valley, this commitment is not just about saving our planet, but it's about saving our neighbors. For generations, areas like Sun Valley, they've been a dumping ground for facilities that are not wanted anywhere else in our city. Today, factories and garbage dumps and freeways surround our schools and our homes. This also includes facilities like the Valley Generating Station, which is two miles from where I live with my family in Sun Valley. While these infrastructures are critical in helping our city function, the Valley Generating Station helps keep lights on in the San Fernando Valley during heat waves. It also, however, contributes to making Sun Valley one of the most environmental, environmentally contaminated neighborhoods in the entire state of California. 
This is a real health impact on residents. For little children who wake up in the middle of the night with asthma attacks to older residents suffering from strokes and heart attacks. It also sends a psychological message to people that live in these neighborhoods and open their windows and see smokestacks instead of parks and libraries across the street from their, their own homes. This is why my goal is not to just talk about our progressive climate change policy, but to make it one of the most equitable ones as well. That means that when we talk about transitioning to renewable energy, we need to make investments in places like Sun Valley and other communities who are dealing with the same environmental injustices. This is why programs like the uh, Feed and Tariff program are so incredibly important and why I'm so supportive. In 2019, we installed 2.5 megawatts of solar panels on a building in Sun Valley. This single building will provide enough power to make 1,000 homes carbon neutral. It is also one more step towards taking a polluting emitting gas power plant like the Valley Generating Station offline completely. Solar is also a way to not just clean up the areas in Sun Valley, but actually provide really good paying jobs for its residents. Sun Valley Solar Project has also resulted in 40 people being able to be trained on solar installation who are now able to have a new career um, path. Um, and it was done here in our community. So when we think about climate change policy and solar panels, we need to also realize that it's not just about something that environmentalists are concerned about, that there's actual people behind it. And we have to make an incredible impact to make sure that we are mitigating um, our past and ensuring that people have a career path to a real career, a sustainable job that's actually gonna provide for their families. So with that, I think the implications of having something that is just, that it's in, environmentally sound, but also equitable is really important. And this is why I'm a strong supporter of the FIT program. And I look forward to working with LEDWP, who I know is on your, on your meeting to expand this across our city and bring this, this project to fruition in more communities throughout our city. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Councilwoman, taking time today to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Talk to you guys later. Bye bye. Thank you, Council Council Thank President. You. All um, right, Ariel, you're taking over. All right, we will be right. having now um, Los Angeles Los Angeles Department of Water and Power Speed and Tariff Program Manager Ronak. Chick Halea, and also the electrical engineer of DWP, Justin Ailman. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Ariel, thank you so much for the introduction. Mary, thank you so much as well for championing our local solar programs. You know, as we look to transition towards a 100% clean energy by 2035 or sooner, um, we're always excited to be here and uh, excited to share kind of, you know, uh, where, where we're going with our, with our different local programs. Uh, my name again is Rana Chikalia and I oversee our distributed energy resource programs group under a newly found division called the Resource Planning Development and Programs at the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. Next slide, please. So for today's agenda, we will highlight um, LADWP's local solar portfolio, we will speak to our very successful net energy metering program and our feed-in tariff program. And then we will also highlight our two new pilot programs that were recently approved, being our uh, FIT Plus pilot program and our VNEM pilot program. So as you can see on our slide here, our approach is a portfolio of programs. We have various programs that cater to our customer needs, which has allowed us to deploy over 535 megawatts of locally installed solar in Los Angeles. Approximately 87 megawatts are from the feed-in tariff program. No single program alone, alone solves our grid needs and addresses equity. It's all about a portfolio. I wanna take this opportunity and thank everyone here today for helping our programs be a success. Through successful partnerships we have built with everyone here today, we have the most successful feed-in tariff program in the nation and have retained the number one solar city title in the United States based on total installed solar PV capacity 
for six of the past seven years. A round of applause to, to everyone here that has allowed this program to be a success. Next slide, please. So diving right in, um, our net energy metering program has been very successful since its inception. This program is typically the first we recommend to our customers. Um, as you can, as seen in the graphic, you install solar, photo, uh, uh, solar, solar photovoltaic panels on the roof and it connects to the electric distribution system. This program is tailored towards customers looking to reduce their on-site load by installing a PV system through a contractor of their choice and is interconnected to LADWP's grid as a behind the mirror system. The net difference between the on-site load and PV generation at that facility is what the customer is responsible for paying on a monthly basis. Any excess generation will be applied as credits to the customer's future bill. Net energy metering customers are also able to take advantage of the investment tax credit that is still available. <clears throat> Net energy metering has changed drastically from a process perspective, perspective. Primarily, customers are going to experience less hands-on when submitting their application through the website at ladwp.com solar. Customers get to choose the respective type of interconnection based on their system. A single point of contact model has now been established through the various stages, which includes the application, design, construction, and post-installation phases. For those of you who are more interested in our net energy metering uh, program, we have a partnership in place with Electrum, and I recommend you to take a look at our website at marketplace.ladwp.com slash solar. Here there's an interactive tool you can use that allows you to input your information, which in return provides estimated savings through the installation of a solar system. Additionally, someone will reach out to you with multiple bids that they have received from potential contractors and will provide you some additional context on potential savings. I will now pass it on to our project manager, Mr. Justin Alleman, that will walk us through the specifics of our feeding tariff program. Thank you, Ronick. So just jumping right into some of the benefits for the FIT program. As a property owner, you are able to monetize and underutilize asset in your parking lot or rooftop space, and you can use that to generate up to 20 years of consistent revenue. Unlike the net energy medium program that Ronica just talked about, projects that are connected under the FIT will be given monthly payments for the energy that they generate on their systems. Through this, you're also helping Los Angeles to achieve its 100% clean energy goals, and you're also helping to improve the reliability of the local grid. As a solar developer, you are creating local employment opportunities in the initial development and the ongoing maintenance of these solar facilities. You also have the ability to expand your portfolio as the program is eligible throughout the whole city of LA. And you have the ability to secure the investment tax credit, which is for the remainder of 2021 and 2022 at 26%, declining to 22% in 2023 and declining to 10% in 2024. Now, just some brief highlights of what the feed and tariff program has gone through over the past year or so. The city council has authorized us a 450 megawatt runway, which we will be launching in 50 megawatt tranches in the years to come and making specific changes depending on what the market needs. We've also expanded the renewable energy, energy technologies that are eligible for the program. So previously it was only solar, photovoltaic and landfill gas, but now anything that the California Energy Commission deems as renewable energy will be eligible to apply for our program. And lastly, our current offering established a three-tiered pricing system to incentivize the development of more small-scale and medium-scale projects, as this is where most of our develop distribution need currently lies. So for projects greater than three megawatts, you're looking at a price of energy at 13 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. For those medium-scale projects between 500 kilowatts and three megawatts, it's 14 cents. And for those small scale projects between 30 kilowatts and 500 kilowatts, the rate is 14 and a half cents. Now, how do you apply for the feed and tariff program? The first step is to identify a site where you have land and you have the 
area to build these solar facilities and work with the property owner, whether that's yourself or some other party in order to secure site control, because that's one of the crucial documents that are required for the application process. You will then work with an engineer or some consulting contractor to design the system and figure out how big, how big of a project you can fit. And once you have all that information, you can then fill out the fit application and associated forms that can be found on our website. Once you submit the application, uh, LADUP then conducts a review to determine if and how your project can fit within our system. And if all goes well in about a two to four week time span, we will then assign you to a design engineer who will work closely with you to determine the technical details and the specific interconnection for your project. At the same time, we'll be executing contracts, the standard offer power purchase agreement and the interconnection agreement, which I mentioned previously have terms of up to 20 years to really get you that money that you want for these projects. And in parallel, we will be working with our construction crews to interconnect the system to our grid, which can take anywhere from 12 to 24 months, depending on the scope and nature of your project. And once a project is built and delivering energy to our grid, that's when we will begin the monthly payments for any and all energy that these systems deliver to our grid. As I had briefly mentioned, the feed-in tariff has its own website, ladp.com slash fit, where we host most of the relevant and pertinent information for the FIT program, including all of the program applications, program documents, contracts, and other reports that may be of interest to you. For example, we do update and maintain this FIT monthly dashboard, which highlights some of the key statistics of our program. So currently we have 79.8 megawatts of projects currently active and under development, 86.8 megawatts of projects in service delivering energy to the grid, and that leaves us with 18.4 megawatts remaining for new applications. We also keep track of certain uh, milestones in the project and how the projects are flowing through our program. So for example, we have 16 projects or 5.1 megawatts of projects currently in the technical screening phase, waiting to be assigned a design engineer. And for more about the FIT Plus pilot program that has just been recently approved, uh, back to Ronick Chikala. Thank you, Justin. As we transition towards a 100% renewable and resilient electricity grid for Los Angeles, LADWP has to determine optimal business strategies for broader DR de development and future programs. LADWP has expanded its FIT program to include 10 megawatts of solar and paired battery energy storage projects. These projects are limited to preferred zones of development where the value of energy exported to the grid is the greatest. The FIT Plus pilot program will allow LADWP to determine key processes required to facilitate a broader DR deployment model. The FIT Plus program is structured through a competitive bidding process to maximize value for the energy exported back to the grid and our ratepayers. For projects participating in the FIT Plus program, systems will only be able to interconnect to our 4.8 kV distribution system and limited to a system size of 500 kilowatts. We are currently taking new applications under tranche C that cover specific zones within the South LA, East Valley and West LA regions. This competitive bidding period opened on November 10th of this year and will end on February 8th of next year. We currently have 8.8 .8 megawatts of available capacity under this tranche and urge you to apply if your project falls within the respective DR zone. Next slide, please. The Virtual Net Energy Metering Program is another pilot program, which is an arrangement that enables a multi-meter property owner to build a single solar system on the property and allocate a portion of the proceeds to tenants. Proceeds from the sale of energy will financially be divided with no less than 40% going to the building's tenants. Unlike net energy metering customers who receive credit balances on their bi-monthly LADWP bills, tenants will receive monthly checks from LADWP using the current feed-in tariff purchase price of energy. So depending on the size of your project, uh, it will be a specific purchase price of energy. 
With that said, I would like to thank everyone uh, for the opportunity to discuss our local solar programs. Uh, we will be taking questions once all the presentations are complete. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ronak and Justin. Always a pleasure. Thank you for letting us know what kind of solar program CWP is working with. Um, we will now be joined by Perma City CEO, Jonathan Port. Okay, hey everyone, good morning, or not good morning, good afternoon. I have a presentation, I just need to get it to present. So give me one second, I'll load it up. Okay, can you see the screen? Good to go. Can you guys, you guys can hear me and see the stream? Great. Yes. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Um, so at Perma City, we recently uh, were acquired by Catalyze. So we're now a division of Catalyze. And we're, we're busy doing is we're transforming commercial and, and industrial real estate into more resilient, sustainable, and valuable assets. And we're doing that through what we call smart energy infrastructure and fit <clears throat> and net metering is one of the major tools in that. Let's see. Um, Perma City, we've been, we've been around since 2003, and we make sustainable development accessible and profitable for, for everyone. Um, we, develop, we develop, we finance on our own balance sheet, and we own and operate those assets. Uh, we, we, right now, we're focused on integrated and renewable solutions, and one of the biggest anchors in our portfolio is solar. Uh, again, we've been doing this since 2003. We built many of the major projects in Los Angeles. Uh, which we'll see later on in the presentation. We also now offer smart controls um, to further reduce power consumption and to, and to network between the various technologies we use. Um, we also, in addition to rooftop solar, we do, our, we do, we, we do a lot of solar canopies. We've done that uh, extensively for the Los Angeles Unified School District and we're, we'll, we'll be building more of those. And we've done some signature award-winning canopies for commercial customers. Uh, we do now have our own battery position in batteries, and we do offer battery storage for, for our customers. We're building one of the largest commercial batteries in Los Angeles at AB InBev right now. And we'll take a look again at, at that, take a quick look at that project in a few moments. And lastly, uh, because uh, the electrification in Los Angeles will involve uh, vehicles, we are offering EV infrastructure and we're also involved offering infrastructure to uh, power, the, power the, the vehicle fleets, the trucks, and so on. This is a picture of one of the largest projects in the world we did. This is the Westmont. It's down in San Pedro. It powers about half the homes in San Pedro at 16 and a half megawatts. And um, that took a dry storage facility and, and, and really made a big contributor to the city. Um, the advantage of going with Perma City is we have our own technology. We actually have our own building code that makes building these projects very easy. Why do we have it? Well, we've been doing it for about 20 years now. So <laughs> let's just say the tough industry made us, made us good at what we do. Did not come overnight. Excuse me, Jonathan. So sorry, your screen is very small. The slides. Is there oh, a is way it? of maybe resharing it so it it's full size? Let me see. Or uh, increasing the size. It's just very small for everyone to see. Let's try this. Um, you guys said I'm I'm moving it. Let me move it to a new screen. There we go. Are you seeing it now? It's still pretty small. Um, that's strange because it's big. Uh, let me know when it looks bigger. Okay, hold on. How about now? Here, you have to stop the old share and then reshare it, I think. Stop the old share and reshare. Okay. It's that pause share. There we go. Amazing. Thank you. Perfect. Much better. Thank you. You can see it now. Yep, yes. it looks much bigger. Thank you. 
Oh, okay. Do I need to? Um, all right. Let me let me just go. <laughs> I'll fast forward. Uh, we make sustainable development accessible and profitable. This slide, now that you guys can see it, it says that we do integrated energy solutions. If we do solar, solar canopies, rooftop solar, battery storage, and EV charging, and we do all that network with smart controls. Um, we, I think we got saw that there were experts in solar roofs. We went over the canopies. Here's the battery storage, and here's the EV infrastructure. And we, we left off here, um, the catalyzed advantage with Permacity. We own our own solar technology, including our own building code. We built the largest roofs in the world. Um, this is a picture of the Westmont Industrial Center. The, the FIT project on here powers half the homes in San Pedro. So one of the big advantages of participating in the FIT is we can we power our city within the boundaries. We don't um, displace Joshua trees, tortoises. There's no, it, it is the most um, efficient and least impact on the environment, probably no impact on the environment way to create power. Um, and it does create very stable long-term power costs for LA over the duration. Uh, one of the big advantages we did after we, we joined with Catalyze is we now have our own re-energized platform. So we are actually taking large portfolios of customers and helping them understand the value and how they can participate in the in what we call the in-basin solar. And this comes with a lot of mapping, financial tools, and, and a lot of things to quickly help, help our customers understand what they can do, especially in the rush to decarbonize the planet. Um, for front of the meter projects that fit, I think uh, our DWP gave a great presentation on that. Um, we install solar panels on the property. We sell the, all the solar sold to the utility and the client benefits from a very simple, predictable and guaranteed lease payment for property owners, which is very compatible with the way property is owned. And so this has the, the, the one of the biggest benefits is that the when we do this type of pro project, it's, it doesn't matter what the occupancy is or if the occupancy changes. Now I can say in addition to that, we now have a new program at Permacity where we're, we're allowed, we participate with the owners and vacancy as if um, with, within the same characteristics of the property. So if anyone's interested in that, particularly with the, new, um, with the new net and virtual net metering program with DWP, we can, we can, we can accommodate that. Um, we did touch on our solar strap technology, which really helps us. It makes it really easy. That should be available with a pre-check in the city shortly. So that'll make uh, permits very fast. It's also DSA compliant and we, uh, we're busy now planning the restart of the LA Unified School District. We're taking on the first four schools with probably many, many more to come that will be covered in solar strap and uh, lowering the cost to provide solar for those schools. Uh, behind the meter, which is the net meter, we still have the ability to work with our, our landowners and create lease payments. And again, we can take vacancy risk to really enhance those property values. So we do, we do uh, welcome those conversations. And we're doing that for a number of very large property owners now, but large and small, we're local in LA and we're here, we're here, for, we're here to make the LA basin sustainable. Um, we're all about ESG and renewable energy. Uh, we do, we put vets to work, we make jobs for low income, we share the wealth, and we're really about making this city great and sharing and sharing the benefits of how the of how we're repowering this city. Again, another another picture of Westmont. As you can see, we can make very vast and very um, powerful changes to our environment. You can see the the oil refinery in the background with the solar the solar field on top of a roof in the foreground. Uh, if we all work together, we can power 40 to 60% of our city without having any outside need or any environmental impact. We can decarbonize and we can really restore, restore the environment to where it needs to be. Um, this is a picture of a pro the project we did for ZBEC that's in the district, in Nuri's district. And uh, it was 2.8 megawatts. It was a great project. And uh, those are now those are now uh, dry stores logistics providing much needed goods around Los Angeles. This is a picture of, of AB InBev in, in Van Nuys. We're on phase two. You can see the black is 
phase one that was done about five years ago and the blue we just actually airlifted the equipment onto the roof and we'll be finishing this by the end of the year. Um, a very extensive project, four megawatts, five megawatt hour battery and a great team working on it. This is a, a glimpse of phase three. There'll be canopies that'll be participating in the feed-in tariff project. And, and with ABM Bev intends to uh, decarbonize their plant, which is a major exporter all over, all over the Asia Pacific. Here's an example of a small fit proposal. This is on top of an apartment building. We, we, hope to, we hope to get this one going. So big and small, they're all great projects. Um, and perhaps this one, if not, can, can benefit from the virtual net metering. Uh, this, this project shows about 267 kW. Uh, panels have become very efficient. We use bifacial. We harvest every amount of sunlight we can. And we have an annual production of 454,000 kilowatt hours a year. Uh, this one project, although it may look small compared to the others, still takes 126 cars off the street and, 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 and carbon neutralizes 105 homes. Um, every project's a great project. Um, again, we're happy to discuss the needs of any property owners and how we can help. We're, we're, we're turnkey from A to Z, from, from planning to construction to our own finance. Um, thank you very much for your time, and we'll stand by for any questions. Thank you, Jonathan, for your leadership in renewable energy and for being one of the Los Angeles Business Council's most valued solar provider members. If you guys would like to have a free consultation with a solar provider such as PermaCity, you can feel free to email me at alopez at labusinesscouncil.org. I've already put that in the chat and we can set up a consultation to see what kind of solar program would work best for your property. Okay, thank you again, Jonathan. Next up, we have Grid Alternatives Director of Strategic Development, Alex Turek. Thank you, Ariel, and to all the speakers so far, really great stuff. And it's really amazing to see the, the progress with the feed-in tariff program and all the work that Premier City has done. So thank you, Jonathan, as well. Just going to share my screen. Give me a thumbs up if you all can see that and it's normal size. Great. So as Ariel said, my name is Alex Turek. I'm the Director of Strategic Development at Grid Alternatives, Grid Los Angeles. Today I'm going to focus more on a specific housing sector and that is affordable multifamily housing in the city of Los Angeles. Um, quick background on Grid Alternatives. We are the country's largest clean energy nonprofit. Um, really, you know, we were born in early 2000s out of the realization that clean energy, like any new technology, has a, a pretty severe access problem. Generally, higher income individuals and families are the ones that are lucky enough to be early adopters and benefit from that technology. And obviously this has reverberating and structural effects um, across classes, across communities. And so our mission was really to overcome this, this barrier to access and uh, you know, work to install solar, battery storage, electric vehicle infrastructure to underserved communities. And that can be low income homeowners who qualify for, for state rebate programs that can be Multi deed restricted multifamily affordable housing operators and their renters, um, or it could be mission aligned nonprofits. Um, so we work in both residential and similar to Permit City in the commercial sector, just more focused on affordable housing and, and nonprofits. Um, as mentioned, you know, this is really the, the, the crux of our, of our mission. We believe that this successful transition that Mary spoke to, that Jonathan and LADWP spoke to, should really include everyone. And obviously the councilwoman also, you know, with, with the focus on equity and, and how everyone should be included in this transition. In total, we've installed over 20,000 systems across uh, homes and affordable housing complexes, over 76 megawatts installed, and you can see the stats here. One thing I left out, uh, we're also just as large of a training nonprofit as we are a solar installing um, organization. 
we view every installation as a, as a job training opportunity. So we partner with jo other job training organizations like Homeboy Industries, uh, community college, work source centers, to get folks who are, have an interest in pursuing a new career, the hands-on training that they need, and then ultimately connect you know, up to 80 plus of our trainees per year to full-time employment in this growing clean energy industry. So kind of an overview, and a lot of this has been mentioned already. And again, this is with the context of affordable housing. So I'm hoping there's some affordable housing um, folks on the call today. Um, really the difference between FIT and NEM as, as we see it in the affordable housing context. I think, you know, feed in tariff is really, as, as Jonathan mentioned, a revenue generating opportunity. It's really transforming your rooftop into an asset, a revenue generating asset. And this really makes sense if there's one, a large rooftop, as you saw in the photos in the previous presentation. Um, and also if there's a, a small common area offset. So for multifamily property owners who might just have some common area lighting and, and really a relatively low um, utility bill uh, with a large rooftop, this is where feed in tariff really becomes an option because it allows you to maximize the rooftop space. So the net metering program, you're only able to build a system large enough to offset your common area consumption. So if it's not large, you're really limited to that. Your system is really limited to, to that consumption. So that's where feed and tariff really makes sense. Um, as I mentioned, it's revenue generating. So in the affordable housing context, there's you know, generally complex lending um, scenarios involved with multiple partners. So you know, we've done one feed and tariff program with an affordable housing partner. And you know, we ran into a challenge with what we do with that revenue um, and how we protect it for immediate payback to the lending partners. And we were able to do that. I think the feed and tariff also has a very strong potential to benefit tenants. I'll go over this in kind of the case study that I, I'll go in the next slide. Um, as I mentioned, the net metering is really, as DWP discussed, you know, the traditional um, solar policy that's you know really catalyzed residential and commercial solar to this point. Um, and it's really offsetting, you know, for every kilowatt hour you produce, you offset your kilowatt hour consumption. That's a pretty stripped down version of it, but that's kind of the easiest way to think about it. For the case study I'll be talking about is a feed-in tariff project we did with a 15 unit affordable housing complex in South Los Angeles with the affordable housing nonprofit Esperanza Community Housing. This, and this really speaks to, you know, Jonathan showed the San Pedro project kind of across the street from uh, oil refineries. This, this had a similar environmental justice component to it. This was directly across the street from an oil well um, in South Los Angeles, an urban oil well that had caused a number of health issues throughout the community at large. Increase in nosebleeds, headaches, asthma, really remarkable and scary increase from this very nearby oil production. Um, you know, the community in response bound together, especially through commu Esperanza Community Housing to um, temporarily shut down the site. But this really gave us motivation to look for grant funding to build a 34 kilowatt project, again, exactly, you know, across the street, and to really to showcase the promise and contrast, the promise of clean energy with this dirty, harmful oil production that was really causing harm to the community. So we were able to secure a fund to the 11th Hour Foundation. Again, this is revenue generating. If we didn't go through the feed in tariff program, and this was a net metered project, it would have been about an eighth of the size because it's only common area lighting that it would have offset. So this, this allowed the, the system to be about you know, six to eight times larger. It generates about $10,000 per year. Um, and as part of the grant agreement, this would be going into shared common areas. So Esperanza provides now free internet, a computer lab for the residents to use. You know, A lot of folks that didn't have 
internet access or computer computer access prior now do because of the revenue generating potential of, of the feed-in tariff program. Um, we also have a photo up here of, of, a, of a large community event that again um, show you know bound together the community and um, allowed us to really be a part of, of this um, organizing event that ultimately the good news over the last year shut down permanently the oil well that's across the street. So some, a, a good story there. Outlook wise, and again, in the affordable housing context, um, DWP kind of hit on this. There's this VNM uh, pilot program that's coming out that we're very excited about. We view virtual net metering as a, a really big, or a lack of VNM as, as a, a really large barrier to equity. Um, you know, I think over half of LADWP residents or LADWP customers are renters. And right now there's really a limited way for them to access solar on site. Um, and, and the primary way of doing that is through virtual net metering. So we're happy to hear that there's a pilot program coming down um, the pipeline. We're also optimistic about a potential rebate program, especially for affordable housing that could be in place next year, we're hoping for. Um, there's a similar program in investor-owned utility uh, territory called the SOMA program that's really driven solar development at deed restricted affordable housing. And, I, and our hope is that this can be replicated in LADWP. We're also working on a behind the meter virtual net metering pilot with Loom Energy and Sunrun. And once again, that's friends of community housing. This kind of overcomes the lack of virtual net metering and puts the power of solar allocation to the property owner if they want to deliver those benefits to the tenants meters. Um, this allows uh, the property owner to do that behind the meter, early stages, but could be promising way to um, overcome that barrier I mentioned. And then similar to before, you know, we continue to seek grant funding to support solar development at affordable housing in DWP territory, but we're optimistic about some of the programs that um, are hopefully uh, it, it coming down the line next year. That ends it for mine. I'll just end it with saying if, if there are affordable housing property owners or um, nonprofits who are interested in uh, evaluating their property for solar, either through the feed and tariff program or through net metering or partnering on grant opportunities, please do reach out. My contact information is on this last slide. Um, and I'll stop there and hopefully answer some questions for you all. Thank you so much, Alex. That was extremely informative. Uh, we're going to go ahead and um, just go forth with some questions for the speakers. Uh, we're going to start off with, is the fit for residential properties? Yeah, so most of the FIP projects are on commercial properties, but that doesn't mean it's limited to commercial properties. As long as you can meet the minimum requirements of 30 kilowatts, then you can apply for the FIP program. Does size determine, property size determine which solar program would be best for a property? Sorry. Could you repeat that question again? I if does property size determine which solar program of DWP would be best to go forth with? Uh, typically, the way we approach it is we we obviously recommend um, a net energy metering system. So you know if there is a lot of on-site load, um, we typically recommend our customers to go with a NEM system. However, you know for our larger commercial customers where they have just this large property um, sitting there with not, with not a lot of consumption, then you know these are the instances where we 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 recommend um, feeding tariff. Amazing. Um, yep, did... and, I, and, I, and I'll just add. I, I mentioned this also, kind of echoing that, especially for multifamily um, property owners. I think load is is almost just as on site load is almost just as important as space. Um, but also, you know, the, the total square footage of rooftop is is obviously very critical or parking lot, as, as Jonathan showed, quite a, a lot of his projects also include the, the canopies. 
you know, you really start to achieve economies of scale, um, the larger system that, that you're able, your property is able to host. So the economics become a lot better if there's more um, rooftop area or parking lot area that you can install canopies on. Thank you, Alex. Uh, what is minimum? What is the minimum open non-shaded roof order required to be viable for the FIT program? Yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, again, I think technology has come a long way, right? So I think solar panels itself, they've just become so efficient. And I'm sure Alex and Jonathan can chime in here as well. But, you know, typically for a system size of about you know, 30 kilowatts or so, which is the minimum requirement, you know, for a kilowatt or so, we, we approximate about, um, you know, 100, 100 square feet or so of usable rooftop space. So, um, you know, for, for 30 kilowatts, we would, in essence, um, want the, the equivalent of that. All right, thank you. Um, does DWP limit solar size to off taker load or can the system be oversized for NEM projects? Yeah, so for, <clears throat> for NEM, we, we recommend that um, a customer sizes a system based on whatever their on-site load is. Of course, in the event that there is um, excess uh, generation at that facility, uh, customer can bank those credits to be used at a later stage, but so um, so that's you know that's what we recommend as far as a net energy metering system is concerned. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, what is oh sorry, what is the equivalent square footage for thirty kW versus five hundred kW? Uh, usually we get about, um, so on 30 kW, you'll need about five, uh, 30 kW, you need about anywhere from four to 6,000 square foot roof. And on a 500 kW, you'll need anywhere from a 60,000 to 80,000 square foot roof, just in general. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. If anyone has more questions, please feel free to type it in the chat. Give it one more minute. Oh, um, uh, we have someone that wanted to know where are these solar panels made? Many places, <laughs> many places. Um, of course, everyone knows that China made a huge investment into, into solar technology and is the largest producer but our particular panels are actually, um, we are made to our specs in Southeast Asia now. Um, we do have some made in the USA, but the, the investment, uh, Asia has made most of these successful investments into the, into the manufacturing of solar panels. But solar strap is made in Los Angeles. Our, so our integrate, our, 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 our racking system, everything is fabricated in Los Angeles with with US grade aluminum. All righty, thank you, Jonathan. Okay, I think that is the end with our questions. Um, I do have Ben Stapleton, who is the executive director of US Green Building Council of Los Angeles, who would like to make an announcement about the Green Affordable Housing Program. So take it away, Ben. Thank you, Ariel, and, and thank you to the LA Business Council for having us here today. I uh, just wanted to announce that um, we recently launched a green affordable housing program uh, that's targeting the Eastern San Fernando Valley. Uh, we're currently enrolling property owners in a cohort of, of 10 buildings. We're gonna be doing 10 buildings that we're enrolling now and then 10 buildings around this time next year. Uh, and some of the benefits of the program include tenant education in English and Spanish around uh, energy efficiency, water conservation and occupant health for those tenants. We're also installing a free community EV charging station at those 10 buildings. And then we just found out, as of just a couple of weeks ago, um, we also have the opportunity to install some free heat pump technology. So um, heat pump based um, HVAC and water heating 
uh, the advantages of uh, both the uh, heat pump technology and, and uh, the community EV charging station is these are things that a lot of these property owners would probably have to do at some point anyway in the next 10 to 15 years. So it's a way to really take advantage of some of this discounted equipment up front. And then we're also developing an interactive menu of efficiency and electrification options for property owners and managers uh, that we'll be releasing uh, early Q1 next year. And so we're really looking to onboard um, property owners and managers in the Eastern San Fernando Valley who are interested in taking advantage of these resources and getting support on looking at how they can green their assets. Um, the tenant education, we're gonna be making available as a free asset in the community uh, once we start rolling that out. So please feel free to reach out to me. I think Ariel put my email in the chat, although I think you missed a letter in my email, so I may put it back in there. Oh, uh, sorry about but that. We'll look forward to working with you, and, and thank you again to LA Business Council for allowing us to, to speak up today. All right, let me just write it correctly this time. I think, I think Fernanda put it in, so you're all good. You're all there good. we go. Yeah. All righty, thank you, Ben. Okay, so thank you to everyone who attended our Clean Energy Roundtable. Thank you to all of our speakers. It's always a pleasure. Uh, once again, the Los Angeles Business Council has been working with a lot of our solar provider members, such as Permacity, um, to get people to want to enroll in solar programs that are in collaboration with DWP. So if you would like to get a free um, consultation from one of our solar provider members to figure out what kind of solar program would work best for your property, please email me at alopez at labusinesscouncil.org. And we look forward to uh, keeping in contact with you all and helping you guys turn to renewable energy. So thanks again, everyone. And we look forward to hearing from all of you. Have a great day. All right, Bye. thank you.